We're going to get into this message, and um, we're, we're still on it, man. Loving, love him with your life. Look at somebody say, love him with your life. With your life. Seven. Seven. Seven points. And I don't even think we're done. Amen, because there's just a whole lot of self that needs to die right now during this time. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you think about yourself too much. Yes, you do. I don't care who you looked at and said it. It's the truth. We all think about ourselves too much. We consider ourselves too much. Amen. And this new world order is going to change that. Amen. It's going to get our eyes on the Lord, you know, and it's so weird how, how what happened with the church because back when the church was being persecuted or back when even blacks in this country were being persecuted and different things, that kept the African-American church folks on their knees, seeking God, looking for hope, believing God that their children will have a better existence. They continuously prayed and that's when they saw things happening in the churches and folks getting healed. They trusted God. They didn't trust medicine. They trusted God. They didn't trust the banks and different things. They just trusted God to make a way for them to have income. I mean, if it was meager, they gave God thanks. That's the way it used to be. So the church was on fire back then. It meant something to get up and buck then. Wasn't a bunch of punks bucking. They sit that down. No, nah, no, nah, brother. No, 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 no. Sit down. You're a little sweet. <laughs> Looks, yeah. Hey, sit that down. Lesbian, sit down. You're a little butch. Stomping a little too hard. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they manned all of that. They made sure. They like, look, we, 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 we're standing before the Lord because times were hard on them. But what ended up happening? Well, they started having children, then they started expecting their children to do better than them, which there's nothing wrong with that. But then they begin to push their children into avenues that some of them were cause for compromise in what they believe. But they believe that if you can still get there and get it, it's worth the compromise. And the church's standard begin to fall. They begin to fall. Then they begin to allow anything to come in the church. As long as it had success on it or it modeled what the world considers success, you were allowed to come in. The church board members were comprised of the well-to-do in the church. I'm preaching in here. Yeah. The well-to-do, well, well-to-do, yeah, we need to see, we need them, and this isn't just a church, but it's a business. Then the church became a business. In order to excel in business, you got to do what needs to be done to mix and merge and fit in. Then the preachers started pledging into the secret societies, and they start pushing their children to pledge into Greek-lettered organizations. Then we can begin to deposit our people everywhere and we can grow, what do they call that? The seven mountain mandate. We can take over all the mountains for the Lord. What happened to that? Yeah. And TBN started preaching. Everything became about if you're saved, you should be successful. The seven mountain mandate, all of that. And so the church got caught up in all of that, succeeding in success and all of that. Now, a lot of them, most of them, are married to it, and they don't want to let it go. You mean I got to give up all that I have achieved? No, God can use it. So when they say, do what we say, or we're going to take your success away, the people are choosing the success. They would rather vacate their building faithless, vacate a church, sit at home on video, turn on the TV and watch the college football game with 66,000 screaming fans right next to each other screaming over football all day yesterday. Thousands and thousands 
60,000, 50,000. Right? COVID don't show up on game day. But they can't even sit in a church with 200, 300 of the ones they say they love. The ones that are supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't see no mask in that crowd. Everybody was, I mean, they were arm and arm, jumping, yelling, and spitting. Droplets everywhere. All I could see, when I was watching them jumping stuff, all I could see was Fauci is such a liar. That's the lioness, man. Oh my goodness, he's a liar. Love him with your life seven. Y'all still here? Everybody still good? Okay, amen. Love him with your life seven. AdamandBeliever.com. We're at forward slash loving with your life seven dot PDF. And we're going to move on with the gospel. Amen. Matthew 16 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself, Deny himself and what? And what? Jesus, so, this is so simple and yet so hard. Because the first one means that all your plans you had for yourself, you have to give up for him. Can I say that again? All of your, look at somebody say, all of your plans, you have to give up for him. See, your plans and your mind sound real good. But God's plan for you is why you were created. So it's going to fit better if you trust him. Amen? You know, I'm not, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I ain't trying to toot my own horn, but I'm, I'm a good producer and Good, good at music and stuff. But I just wouldn't fit in the music industry. My plan was to get in the music industry and make music. Could y'all imagine me in the music industry? <laughs> it's not going to work. It's not going to work because that's not who I was created to be. Something I was able to do and it could have got me some money. Right? Could have got me some fame, money, all of that. I was good enough, had the office and everything. That's not, but see, I couldn't foresee that. So when I was younger, I started on that path because that's what I wanted to do. Because that's what I could see. Yeah, in high school, man, in the band, wherever I was, when I went to college, man, I was in the, the at North Texas, I was in the music, um, the music hall, it's called Bruce Hall. Remember that Carmina Barnett? Bruce Hall with all the musicians. And I was in there and the one o'clock loud band was in there. Some of y'all never heard of them. That's like the best band in the world. Kumon, I know who they were. Some of Kumon's friends was in there. Uh, uh, Shelly and Victor and those guys were in there and they got me. Now I'm just a regular musician. They got me to actually do their, their musical thesis for graduation. So I'm in there working with the one o'clock, the Grammy Award winning one o'clock loud band. That's how much talent I had at the time. My skills have diminished some. Because <laughs> I do other things. <laughs> but at the time, I was pretty good. And I'm in there doing it, so I'm just thinking, look, this is the Grammy Award winner. These dudes win every year. Hey, this time, I, this, this is what I'm gonna do. And the Holy Spirit said no. And God visited me and told me what my purpose was, told me what he wanted me to do, and then left the choice up to me. Yeah, that's what he did. Left the choice up to me. So you could do it this way, or you could do it your way. And I say, God, <laughs> you're God. Like, you're Alpha and Omega. All I can see is the beginning right now. But you can see the end. So I best go with your plan for me. Because your plan coincides with 
everything that I'll be at that time. So all my musical friends started calling me. I was like, hey, man, I'm out. It's like, what? Oh, you just wasting your time. Oh, man. You said, most of them were saying that because I had deals with them, or future deals with them. So I was messing a whole lot of stuff up. I had folks mad at me, hate me, or whatever. So I was like, bro, I can't do it. God came to me. God, what? He came to me and told me what I was supposed to be doing. What you supposed to be doing? I was supposed to be preaching against all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but when you just try it, you the, you ain't gonna be done. You did that. They all just, man, it was rough. It was rough because I didn't have any proof. I just knew what God told me. God came to me and said, if you're gonna come after me, the first thing you gotta do is deny yourself. Then you got to take up the cross, and that was the, that was the hard part, taking up the cross. <laughs> but I chose him. I chose his way, and that's why we're here in here now. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I ain't somewhere on the Stellas trying to minister in 10 minutes. <laughs> With a room full of bucking. <laughs> he can't minister to the buckers. They just want a buck. Stop that preaching, start that music so we can buck. It's all about the buck. <laughs> all that bucking, all the praise, now all the praise break videos just look ridiculous. When they show them online, they just look ridiculous. I mean, all of them, just picking folks out the audience. Just, I mean, all kind of stuff. Just, the, 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 the little coats, you know, the coats just way up to here in the back. <laughs> It's like, so when you got fitted for that suit, did you stand like that? <laughs> and they just, oh, fuck, 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 just. <laughs> it's that banana bag. And now what does it mean? Where did it get you? The church closed. Now you're bucking with mask on. I saw one bucking with a shield. Shield all fogged up. Matthew 16 and 24. Let me get into, the, into this message. Yeah. It's been a long week. Oh, did y'all enjoy the prayer on Wednesday? I'm proud of this church. Thank y'all all for showing up. I mean it. Y'all been doing okay with it without the sugar? Hey, Amen. You don't even miss it, do you? <laughs> See, there you go again, Pastor. I wake up every day and do what I always do because, hey, it don't affect me like that. I'm not a sugar guy. But oh, some of you, oh, over in the middle of the night, you hear packages opening. That sounds like a Three Musketeers. <laughs> Who tore that package? <laughs> but water is great. You get thirsty enough, water can be whatever you want it to be. It can be whatever you want it to be. This is Dr. Pepper water. Just you get thirsty enough. Water's good for you. Drink that water. Amen. Cleanse your system. Get all that dye out of you. Your insides just green. Minty. This is going to help you though. This is going to bless you this month. Amen. All right. Y'all hang in there. Look at somebody say hang in there. Man, we're doing this unto God. Preparing our bodies, getting our bodies strong. Somebody said, oh, but have you heard what's happening in October? I said, what's happening? There's all kind of prophecies on them. I said, that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because it's right to do. Yeah. Amen? It's right to do. I don't know what's going to happen in October, and I don't listen to everything they say. All the electricity is supposed to be gone in October, but that's, that's, that happens every year. 
that one woman gets online and, and makes that statement, then they start sending it in the text messages, telling you what to gather up and all that. that. That happens every year. But that's not why we're doing it. We're fasting because it's right to do. It's time for, look at somebody say, it's time for sugar to leave. Hey, man, you bound to sugar. It's real demons and devils out there. And sugar gonna be what take you out? Food? The fork? Nah, it's not worth all that. All right, let's get into this message. Y'all good? Everybody okay? Amen. Just had to reiterate that. We still own it. Amen. We'll be back here for prayer this coming Wednesday, fasting all day. That's not six to six or whatever somebody told you. Those wasn't the year ABC instructions. We wake up hungry. We go to bed hungry with a whole hungry. When your life is no longer your own, your decision making changes. Instead of trusting in your own plan, you allow the counsel of the Lord to guide you. So when your life is no longer your own, your decision making does what? It changes. There are going to be times when you're going to have to do something you wouldn't normally do. But because your life is no longer your own, your decisions making changes. You know, if you apply this principle, you could save any marriage. Any marriage. That means there is not an argument or something y'all could have. Uh, it just takes one of the two of you to give your life up. You both should do it. But if you see that it's about to mess up, give your life up. Sacrifice your life for that marriage. I know I am. I, hey, ain't nobody clapping. That's okay. But sacrifice your life. Or both of you sacrifice your lives for your children. Why is what we want and our argument and all that so important that we're going to mess our children up over it? Your decision making is supposed to change when you're saved. And instead of trusting in your own way or plan, you allow the counsel of the Lord to guide you. Yes. Counsel of the Lord. You read in the word. You hear in the word. Hear in the preach word. That's the counsel of the Lord. Proverbs 19 and 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Amen. Amen. You put yourself in a place like this where you're getting counsel even through preaching or you may get it through, you know, uh, uh, reading the word, or whatever it is. You have to yield to it and allow it to change your decision making. Why would you come here a word against your plan and keep your plan? How far do you think you're going to get? Do you know you're hurting yourself by coming here and ignoring what's being preached? Yeah, coming here questioning everything and oh, he did it. You're hurting yourself. St stay home. Stay home and be okay with your decisions. Don't come here just to rebut. makes no sense you no longer make decisions based on societal norms but you do what the word of God tells you your decision making cannot be rooted in societal norms because society is crazy I did a tweet I put a, a, a tweet the other day and I just said I don't, I don't remember the exact way I phrased it but I just said these folks that are calling themselves Christians and making these Facebook posts, they, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. They, because they, they, they're standing, they believe that there's something wrong with morality, something wrong with conservatism. They try to separate morality and 
conservatism from the Bible because they believe it's linked to racism and white evangelicals. So I told him my Bible teaches against immorality, which is the opposite of morality. And my Bible teaches against liberalism, which is the opposite of conservatism. So how are you making that political when it's really biblical? Oh, but see, Trump, Trump, Trump's not in the Bible. The Trump sounding is in the Bible, but not Donald Trump. Bruh, morality was right before Trump. Morality was right before the U.S. government abused it and linked it to racism. Conservatism is the only way Christians live. We can't support liberal agendas and it has nothing to do with politics. I don't want my children gay. I don't want them to be a part of the LGBT. I don't want my daughter to have an abortion. I don't want any of those because those things are sin. Has nothing to do with the U.S. government. Don't have nothing to do with a donkey and an elephant. Brother, don't have nothing to do with red and blue. Has to do with the Bible and what Jesus said. Man, how stupid are you? Gonna stand with the witches, the warlocks, the gays, the sleaze, the worst because you think there's a racist agenda. Was it that easy? Well, see, I know what the problem is. The problem is even racism. Problem is you got a personal issue you and your father need to have a conversation brother that's what that is you have a deficit that they exploit it can't be mad at no racism that didn't happen to you say no more this is a dirty shame oh this is what they're doing to these people brother you can't get that mad about something that's not happening to you you mad about something else, I promise. I'm already preached, but I'm going to keep going. Isaiah 1 and 19, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall do what? You're not eating the good of the land unless you're willing and obedient. So if you're aiming for the top to have the goods of the land, you better be willing and obedient to God. Because if you get it any other way, you got to be obedient to the source. You line up your life with the plan that God has for you. This is the plan he intended for you since the beginning. Do you know God has a plan for you? Since the beginning. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Whatever his plan for you to be in turmoil. Yeah. Whatever his plan for evil to happen to you. Yeah. He has an expected end for you. Yeah, you're going to go through those things because the devil is here. Yeah. But he sees the end. If you follow him, you'll get there. Yeah. To that expected yeah. end. Can I encourage you today? Amen. Amen. Take up your cross. Taking up your cross is really just dying to the things that are driving you. Or causing you to strive for mastery. Whatever that is in you that's making you try to be 
better than others. There's nothing wrong with being better. You just can't strive to be better than someone else. I know I just preached. That's okay. Yeah, you can't be better than somebody else and be in the kingdom. That's not self-denial. Yeah, so you don't steer your life to compete with a person or someone else. Look better in the eyes of others so that their comments about you will be grand. No, we all deserve death. We all a bunch of old wretched beings trying to make it into the kingdom. So we don't have time to put nobody else down, especially lift ourselves up by putting them down. We're no better than anyone else. That's not God's way, Romans 8 and 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do kill the deeds of the body, ye shall live. This is about taking up your cross. It's about dying to that. It's time you die to that. Looking better in the eyes of others. Worried about how people think or feel about you. It's time to die. Look at somebody say, it's time to die. It's time to die of that. Let COVID kill that. Hey, let, it, let COVID kill that. You trying, you worried about what folks are thinking about you. You must address whatever was done to you that implanted the spirit of affectation or proving yourself to others. Has to be addressed. It's been implanted in you. That's what makes you get on Facebook to show yourself. Showing stuff that's stupid and nobody cares. And you think they care. Three lights and two of them was you. <laughs> nobody cares. Then you do something real stupid and get a bunch of likes, but they're not liking you. They're mocking you. Showing it to people, ooh, look how stupid this was. You believe she got on there and did that? Ooh, look at all the likes I got. Oh, wow, look at all the views. People love foolery. Tyler Perry is famous over some foolishness. He got a new show now. Y'all see what the Christian man, the preacher, he the preacher, that's the one that laid hands on the bishop and birthed the baby in him. Yeah, he got a new show with a woman who's a madam of a male strip club. Yeah, yeah, this is his wild, this is what, this is what it was all for. This is what it was all for. Now there's going to be shirtless men 24-7. Everywhere you turn. Yeah, because morality is, is racist, racist. Can I keep preaching in here? It's hard to believe it. It's hard to believe that's really happening. That's really happening. And he'll be at Joel Osteen's church preaching again. He did last year. Preached the whole sermon there. But you got to address it. If you don't address it, you'll start doing stuff like that. Anything in you that's making you prove yourself to others. This spirit must be removed. You can no longer be driven by your own selfish desires. You must nail the old man and his deeds to the cross. Amen. Amen. The old man is going to get you in trouble because the old man is going to want to please your flesh. Galatians 5 and 24. And they that are Christ's have what? Crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Look at somebody say, take care of your flesh. You better take care of it. The cross represents everything that is a human desire being crucified with only the spirit remaining. God wants his spirit living through you, not you living through his spirit. 
Yeah, that's what people are doing. Stamping Christ on everything. Calling themselves believers. Well, the devil is calling their bluff. He wants to see who's going to keep saying that. Is he really your Lord and Savior? Is he really a healer? Really? He really heals. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ. This is Paul. Nevertheless, I, yet not I, but what? Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the what? Faith, Faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That means I have to disappear. What I wanted to get from people, what I wanted to be, has to go. I have to really allow myself to be crucified so that Christ can live through me. This is why the world doesn't see it. They see the Tyler Perry claiming Christianity and then doing all this nasty stuff. They see that. And so they don't really see Christ living through it. Yeah, it all becomes just a joke, a mockery of what is true. Where is the power? Unless you die to your will, you will not be able to follow Christ. Unless you look at somebody and say, unless you die to your will, Somebody thinking about Tyler Perry. Ooh, I didn't know. <laughs> unless you, like somebody said, unless you die to your will, you will not be able to follow Christ. You're just not. You have to die to your will. Your will won't allow you to fully conform to his image. Romans 8 and 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot what? Please cannot please God. This cannot be about what you want to do. Can I say that again? Yeah. To the folks way back there by the screen. This, <laughs> this cannot be about what you want to do. It has to be about what God. And I know people say all the time, but I mean, I get before the Lord and, 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 and I don't hear, I don't know exactly what he wants. I mean, what if, then you wasn't in front of him long enough. That's right. Amen. You're not going to bring your wretched self in front of him for five minutes and expect to hear an audible voice. You haven't even given up what you wanted to do. You have to do that first. You have to give up what you want to do first. God is not going to tell you what he wants you to do until you give up what you want to do. Are y'all listening to me? Those that choose to exalt self and follow their own way can only conform to the image of man, the man of sin, which is what? Antichrist. This is how the end times will unfold. An antichrist is a substitution for Christ. That's what antichrist means. It doesn't mean against Christ. It means a substitute for Christ. Many antichrists, many substitutes have come. Yeah, many have put something in the place of Christ. Their income, their job, their career. Their will, their plans, their wants, these are all in their lives antichrist. Because they've replaced Christ with them. And this is how the end times will unfold. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a what? Falling away. Falling away. What do people fall away from? We used to think this meant the preachers was going to start backsliding and all this. No, 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 no. The falling away is people putting something in Christ's place. That's the falling away. 
Fear of COVID is antichrist. It's in his way. It's blocking you from going into the church house. That's the falling away. So the Bible said, you know that day's not going to come unless a falling away comes first. And you know it's a falling away because they once believed in the power of God. Now the power don't work. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, whoever that shall be. But look at somebody and say, we're in that time now. Those that follow their own will, desires, and plans will have to take the devil's mark to continue on that course. Believers in Christ will not be able to walk the same course as those that pledge to the image of the beast. Revelations 20 and 4, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them. This is us. Me, I'm going to be on one of them. And judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not, now listen, worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So listen to this again. These are the people that have not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither have received his mark upon their foreheads. So don't think folks are getting a vaccine and it means they worship the beast and his image. There's a lot going on right here. These are people that are against Christ, against God's kingdom, and with the kingdom of the enemy. Amen? Okay, I'm just letting you know. So you keep praying for people. They're giving children vaccines. I'm not giving up on children and saying that they took the mark of the beast and it's over. These little kids don't even know what the beast is. It's just not going to play out like that. I'm trying to tell you. These folks are the, the ones that have worshipped the beast, his image. And, and you're going to know when folks are taking the mark because the ones that don't take it are going to be killed. According to the Bible. Isn't that what the Bible says, Elder? Y'all watch too many YouTube videos. They, I mean, y'all need to quit watching. Our, Ooh, it is the Mark Pastor. Whoa! <laughs> it's a shot. Summary! Amen. I mean, they just keep doing stuff for me to preach about, don't they? <laughs> in 2021 being in Christ can no longer mean just going to church claiming to be a believer but being conditioned by the world system those are the ones at home with no visitors they went to church and claimed to be a believer claimed it and you know I found out a lot of people just claim salvation and stuff to get away from their bad decisions in the house. Woo! Yeah, just made a bunch of bad decisions. So in church, I can shine and nobody will be the wiser. Because all the decisions I make are stupid and foolish. But in church, I'm a wonder working somebody. Oh, get around me. Oh, boy, they can do anything in the church house. Oh, I see. Oh, God is showing. Ah. Ooh, God is showing me. Oh, brother. God said, ooh, and do that in church and then get home. Don't nobody in the house like him. Dog rolling his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they come to church. Ooh, ooh, see, ooh, I had a dream in my dream. And then in that dream, I had another inception. Brother, how many levels of this dream did you have? They be wonder workers. You had three levels of dreams and didn't see no mask or no social distancing. The world system is the beast system. 
So if you desire to be somebody in the world, you must deny Christ's will for you. If you trust in the world, you don't trust him. If you trust in your money, you don't trust him. If you trust in man, you don't trust him. If, you're, if you trust your own ability, you don't trust him. If you believe what the news and the social media are telling you, then you do not believe what the Bible says. If you have fear, then you do not have faith. The line, look at somebody and say, the line has been drawn. The real believers are the ones that believe him with their entire lives. Not just in the church, man. The Lord is at home with me. He's at work with me. He's in the gym with me. The Lord is always with me. I don't have to make a show in church, jump over pews and knock the drums over to prove that I've been touched by something. Real believers trust in God's plan for them. Through his plan, provision is made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at somebody say, through his plan, I have provision. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to eat. Where you're going to sleep. What you're going to wear. Because in his plan, I have provision. Now, I might not get there by Lexus, but look at somebody say, I'm going to get there. <laughs> I might not get to eat at three forks, but look at somebody say, but I'm going to eat. I might can't rock the ones, but look at somebody say, my feet will be covered. Provision is made. You better declare this stuff with me. See, I'm speaking it because I know it to be true. And you better be in agreement with it. The just shall live by faith. Don't you draw back. There is no need to worry about having what you need if you are in the plan of God. I'm going to say that again. There is no need to worry about having what you need if you are in the plan of God. God's plan for us is not for us to lose, but to win. God ain't trying to take a hell. <laughs> He's God. He's already won. We're just living it out. So in order to endure the coming tribulations, we must keep our faith in God and his plan for us. Not in our own ability, not in our knowledge, and not in our understanding. We must lean on him and we will make it through these times. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to make it through if I lean on him. Hey, woo! Proverbs 3 and 1. I love the word because the word is truth. Especially in a time where nothing but lies are going on. Lies are being spoken. I need the truth. Proverbs 3 and 1. My son, forget not my law, but let, my, let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Man, if you keep this commandment, the length of days, long life, and what? Peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find what? Favor. And good understanding in the sight of God. When things get bad, you're going to need good understanding and favor in the sight of man. 
See? Yeah, you can't just be, oh, only God don't understand me. Folks hate me, but God, no, 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 no. Yeah. Time's going to come where you're going to need understanding in the sight of man. Yeah. Man going to have some water you need to drink. Yeah. And you're going to need understanding in the sight of man. So we need to practice that now to get, keep our mouth off folk. Quit always gossiping and talking about folks. Quit being such an old wretched rich neck. Learn how to get along with folks so you can get something. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. How much of your heart? How much is all? <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all of it. And lean not unto your crazy understanding. Quit watching videos, snippets. Somebody explain the mark of the beast in 30 seconds. That's impossible. Somebody sent me that the other day. See, Pastor, they proving that it's the mark of the beast. I said, brother, this video is a minute long. I ain't watching it. It's too short. <laughs> Quit watching everything. Now, some of it is informative. Some of it may be. But, man, are you ready for it? Can you handle all that? And do what you need to do as a person? Some of y'all on the verge of divorce because you in there on the computer all day. Kids don't ever see you. Oh, but I'm praying, I'm in a seat, and I'm trying to find out what's going to happen. Why you need to know what's going to happen? You going to change it? I need to know what to pray for. Pray for your bad kids. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Got folks on your street trying to break into your car. Pray for them. You just, oh, you too. I, I just. <laughs> you better look out the window. <laughs> That's something to pray about out there. But trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into what? Your own understanding. Something is wrong with your understanding. So you don't lean to it. Proverbs 3 and 6. And in all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge him and he's going to do what? Direct thy path. Everyone stand to your feet. Ooh, that's a good word. I trust the word of the Lord. I don't believe what they're saying. I don't believe what they're showing. I just don't believe it. Even some of the truth stuff I don't believe. I just can't believe everything I'm seeing. In all my ways I have to acknowledge him. So he can direct my path. I don't need my mind cloudy in 2021. I don't need to be thinking about a bunch of stuff. I need to focus on what God's plan for my life is. Amen. Amen. If you need that today, just come for just clarity in your mind. God, get all of these other voices out my head so I can hear what you are saying. If that's you, just come on. I, come on. I done got a hold of some videos and oh, I got a whole library on my hard drive. See, this is the folder right here. This is all the end time stuff. This folder is for the beast. And this folder right here is for the... Man, where is your folder with the scriptures in it? Where is your folder with the word in it? Where is your folder with the 66 books of the Bible in it? What the world is doing don't change us. We're still God's people. So we want to be led by him. His plan for us. He knows it's 2021. He knows what they're doing. He's been knowing what they were going to do. He knows what they're planning. He knows what they're saying. 
He knows what parts are true and what parts are a lie. He knows all of that. So why not just get close to him? Why not just discover him and let him lead and guide you? In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Anyone else? Hallelujah. He knows everything. I'm putting my faith and my confidence in him. He just wants you to trust him. He's concerned about the little things. Things that you would think that can't be that important to God. And it's important to him. I'm going to give you all a little testimony this morning. I told one of the brothers this up here. So we got this little setup up here. And I got this. I had to play bass today because our bass player in here, Chris. And I'm spoiled now. So I hate having to do it. But So I got this Moog, uh, mini Moog, the synthesizer bass. Y'all hear the bass sounds, whatever. Well, last week, there was a problem with it. To my ears, it just wasn't sonically, it wasn't sounding right. It's just, you know, Rob and Eddie was trying to tweak it, and he's like, oh, it sounds okay. But in my mind, I was like, it, it just don't, something wrong with it. So this morning, I woke up and I was like, man, I gotta play bass, and my mood ain't sounding right. Then I'm just having human thoughts. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, somebody pushed one of your pedals down there. Plain as I just told you, I got up here this morning. Everything was turned on, pushed that pedal, everything was to normal. And I said, Lord, are you really concerned? He said, I'm concerned about you. Yeah. I'm concerned about, I'm like, that don't even matter. But to him it does. Just that little thing, because I woke up, I was like, man, and the Lord's like, you gonna mess the whole message up, worried about the mood base. <laughs> He didn't say that, but I'm thinking that's what he was thinking. Because in my mind, I was like, man, I got to play. Bass. I take this stuff seriously, y'all. I want everything just right because I believe God is worthy of that. I believe everything needs to be just on an excellence level. Everything just has to be right. That's why you can't be up here if you can't play. If you can't sing, I'm sorry. You got to do something else. <laughs> it's got to be right. <laughs> But he was concerned about that. That ministered to my heart because I almost couldn't wait to get up here and click it to see. I was like, Lord, you care. You really care. And that's how he is about you. The change in your purse, in your pocket, he's concerned about. What you lack, what you don't have, what you need, how you feel. He wants and expect it in. What's best for you? So all you gotta do is come up here and get it. It's available for you. It's available for you. So everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, in a time where so much is going on and just so many opinions, fake, false facts, false information, true, some true information, just so much information. God, we are so bombarded. Many of us have just taken on weight, taken on heavy weights, carrying the opinions, carrying the fear, carrying the anxiety, carrying the worry, the stress of it all. But you said in all our ways we should acknowledge you and you will direct our path. So we release all weight right now. Come on, lift your hands up. Just as a sign of release. I can't hold nothing in my hands if my hands are up. I release it all to you. The weight of it. The weight of the care. The weight of the concern. The weight, the heaviness, the worry, the stress. Wondering what's going to happen. Wondering what my job's going to try to force me to do. Wondering what's going to happen next week. How am I going to feed my family? What happens if, I, if this happens? And what happens if that happens? And Lord, just, no, no. Let it go right now. The weight of it. Let it go. Let it go. Trust the one that made you. He brought you this far. You said that. You said he brought you this far. You said he brought you here. You said that. You said he brought you to this place. You declared that. You said it in faith.
faith. So keep the faith. If he brought you here, he didn't bring you here to leave you. If he put you here, he didn't put you here to abandon you. You said it. Mean it from your heart. And cast your cares on him. Because he cares for you. God, we trust you with everything. We love you with our lives. And we won't carry weight home with us. We leave it here. You take it, God. And direct our paths. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We give you the glory and the honor, God, for it. Trusting in you in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hug somebody and say, I let the weight go. I let the weight go. I'm not carrying it home with me. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Elder. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. Look at somebody and say, I'm letting it go. I'm not carrying it anymore. It's too heavy. It wasn't designed for me to carry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.